Hello, Clutterbugs. I'm excited about today's video because we are talking about 25 things that you don't need that you're going to declutter today. And here's why I wanted to go live with you because now we can fight in the comments. I can see if you're like, but I really love my, you know, XYZ cast, then we can have a conversation about that because Sometimes these 25 things you do need to keep, but most of the time you do not. And I chose these 25 because as a professional organizer, I was helping people over 10 years. And these are the weird things that I saw over and over and over again. Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Empty boxes. We've talked about this a lot, but why? Why, friends? I know it's a really good box. Now, there is an exception. The exception is if it's electronics, like the phone you're currently using, your laptop box, and you sell it after, I can see why you're keeping the box. Please explain why there are vacuum cleaner boxes, the box from, you know, all the, the hair curling irons, blow dryers. You buy something, you're like, I'm going to better keep the box in case I need to return it one day. Um, you don't need the box to return something that doesn't work anymore. And you're not returning your vacuum from 10 years ago. And I say vacuum cleaner box because honestly, I would say 50% of the homes that I decluttered had their original vacuum cleaner box in their basement or their garage. This is something I see a lot. And I think, but they might come in handy for something. I love your comments. You guys, you love, and Carrie loves a nice box. She loves a nice box. No, the boxes have to go because your house is not an alternative to the transfer station or the dump. Like friends, you're leaving. The, the boxes are leaving. Okay. Next, expired food. Now, this isn't something we do on purpose. I have never in my life decluttered someone's kitchen and not found expired salad dressings and sauces. Never. I guarantee all of you, every single one of you, maybe if you just decluttered your fridge, possibly you don't. But 99% of you have expired food in your fridge. And here's what we do. I am so guilty of this too. I also probably have expired food in my fridge because it's been a while. I will like check the salad dressing and see that it's expired and put it back in the fridge. Why do we do this? This is weird. Sauces are like really bad because we buy like we're going to, I don't know, marinate something or we buy some like kind of steak sauces or all these type of things. And then we, we don't eat it again. We bought it like for one meal, one time. Mayonnaise is bad too. Mayonnaise will that will, that will hurt your guts, bro. The expired mayonnaise has got to go. So take two seconds and just check the dates, especially on your salad dressings and things that like are creamy, like mayo and, and sauces and things like that in your fridge. It, right now, pickles don't expire. <laughs> You're right. You feel called out. Those are dead pickles. Pickles don't expire. If it's in a vinegar, meh. If it's past their expiration date, it's fine. Keep it. If it's something that's dairy based, don't just let that go. Don't. My mom has like salad dressings from 2014. That will kill you. No, I don't know if it will kill you, but just that's a hard no, friends. We're not doing the expired food. It can go. Oh, okay. Clothing that is too small. Here is, I'm like, I, I'm going to fight you for clothes that are too small because it isn't motivating to you to lose weight, especially if they're in your closet. They do not fit you or they don't fit you right. These are bullies and they're toxic. And every time you go to get ready and you pull out those jeans, you're like, oh yeah, these are the ones I can't do up the button. You're allowing those crappy jeans to call you fat and to make you feel like a failure and to be nasty to you. And then we put them back in the drawer or back in the closet so they can bully us again tomorrow. What? I, and, and, and it's not like we're in denial. 
I, I've gained, I've recently gained 20 pounds. I'm not in denial. I know I've gained weight. I don't need my clothes pointing it out to me every morning. My clothing pointing it out to me is just making me want to be sad and eat some cookies. These clothes have to go. And you don't have to declutter them necessarily, but don't keep them in your closet. Stand up for yourself. They can go under your bed. They can go somewhere else, but they 100% have to leave because, because no, because no. And then I'm just saying this. I have decluttered so many people's homes and they will say to me, I have no room for anything. I have to have piles of clutter because I've got no place to put things. And I say, show me your linens. And they open up an entire closet dedicated to sheets and blankets. Say what now? It's true. If you are short on space and you have an entire closet dedicated to sheets and blankets, that's bonk donks. That's, that's, that's another level of crazy pants because what the deuce bros, you don't need it first of all, and it, you don't need that many and it shouldn't be taking up an entire closet. You have way too many sheets and blankets. Not everybody's going to be puking all at the same time. And this is like, what if, what if suddenly we have 20 guests all spending the night at the same time? That will never happen. It's not going to happen. And you're just wasting space with extra blankets and sheet sets because we treat ourselves to new sheets or new blankets and we never get rid of an old one. We've got blankets that are 40 years old in our closet that we're keeping just in case someday or wherever we're keeping our bedding. It's got to go. It's crazy. What about keeping enough blankets for one person? Yeah, I I'm not saying like all the blankets. Listen, Melissa, not all the blankets have to go. I keep one extra sheet set per bed and I keep two extra blankets total. So every blanket that's on the bed plus two extras, but you can vacuum seal these and stick them under each of the bed. There's lots of places that you can put them. If you're short on space, if you've got oodles of room, have a dedicated closet for that. But if you're short on space, that's a no. The blankets can go. What about the throw blankets? We buy like throw blankets and then we keep the old... Bl it's clutter. It's clutter and it's crazy. It's clutter and it's crazy. So if you do nothing else today, I hope you gather up the extra bedding and you drop it off at the Humane Society. They would love it for the dogs and the kittens and the baby animals. They would love a soft thing, okay, They the, to, to sleep on. Do it. What is this show? It says, where will I hide if I put something under the bed? Well, hide in the shower. I know we've all seen that scary movie with the, but we can hide in the shower. I don't know. It just get the throw blankets are leaving joyful piano melodies. The, the throw blankets are leaving. How many do you need? Seasonal throw blankets. I know, but you know, we don't have to get rid of all of them, but let's get real. It's excess and it's clutter and we're all wanting more space. We want a life that's easier and we don't need the throw blank. The puppies need the throw. The, the baby kittens need the throw blankets or the homeless people need the blankets. Okay. Old planners. I added this because not only have I seen a million old planners uh, or calendars that are full old journals that people have filled out um, at almost every place I've ever decluttered. But I have like 15 planners sitting in that closet over there that I just discovered the other day. They got to go. I am not a planner person, but I want to be so badly, so badly. So I buy new planners thinking this is the one. This is the holy grail that will change my life and make me a more organized person. And then I forget to use it. And then I forget I own it. And then I buy another planner. And I play this cycle over and over. I repeat it over and over until I have a whole closet filled with planners that I use none of them. And it feels like, ooh, can I get rid of these because they're expensive? I forget that I own them and I'm still going to go buy new ones because I'm dumb. 
but I don't need to keep the old ones because it's not like I think, hey, I need a planner. I'm going to go find all the ones I stash everywhere. No, no, friends. I'm at the store. I see a planner. I think you're going to change my life. You're coming home with me, friend. So the old ones are leaving. And the filled out ones, we they gots to go. They just gots to go. They're just wasting space. They're just wasting space at this time. Okay. Nasty towels. My kid likes to dye her hair a lot with manic panic, so she ruins towels. So we have a couple ruined towels that are like Izzy's hair dyeing towels. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about the torn, ripped, faded, nasty towels that are like, why? We buy ourselves new towels or we get them as gifts and then we still just keep the old towels. And that's that just in case mentality of like, we got something new maybe a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, but we don't get rid of the old. And now they're just taking up space and they're kind of gross and they're grody and they're yucky. So if you have these yucky old nasty towels, take them for the kittens and the puppies when you take your bedding because you deserve better than a crusty rip stain towel. When you get out of the clean bath or the shower and you're looking glorious, all glistening wet, I don't want you to dry yourself with that nasty rag because you deserve better. And so does your family. You're not allowed to have that. Those got to go, friends. Lost socks. This is tough for me. I Everybody gives me this advice all the time because I struggle with lost socks. Just put them in a bag together or pin them all together. Who is doing this? I, I think you're underestimating my laziness. I think you're drastically underestimating my... I, while I'm doing laundry, I'm just trying to get the, the dirty clothes clean. I'm not sorting. I'm not going through and pinning my socks. So I end up with like a lot of lost socks. So here's what I do. It's the only thing I found. If you're lazy like me, it really works. I do like the lost socks love game where I, I dump all the lost socks we have out. And then I'm like, you, where's your mate friend? And then I find it like, bow, tra, bow, wow, and I pair them together. And I do this like once a month, I pair all the lost socks, but there's always those lonely losers left that I can never find their mate. And I know in theory, they're somewhere in the house, but I also just throw them out. <laughs> because I have enough socks, first of all. And second of all, they're the bane of my existence. And I know you can use them maybe for dusting or this and that. Or you could just say goodbye and 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 have less mismatched or holy or whatever socks and forgive yourself. So you could do this too. Option B, all the socks are the same color from Costco. Man, we could all just start fresh. This is a beautiful idea, Kristen. Let's be lazy together. Yes, but I'm also very cheap. And so I have socks. I just like, I don't want to play the pairing game for all of them. And plus a lot of them, my kids have outgrown. You pin your socks. <laughs> Melody, you're, you're a cricket or a bee. I know this. I know this with all of my being because that is somebody who takes time in life to do the little details. I am not that person. I will never be that person. So I just, socks is my nemesis. So I just, I, I, I do the love game. This is fun. Especially if you get the family involved, you're like person who finds the most matches wins, you know, and you're like, and then when you find a match, I like to sing a, a song like, what's going on, you know, mm -mm. some sort of inappropriate love song because they found their long lost love. You know, that makes it a better experience. But then the ones that at the end of the game don't have a friend, they're leaving. They're leaving. Okay. Thing number eight to declutter, cleaners, specifically cleaners that you aren't using. 
you've bought them because maybe uh, you saw it on TikTok or you like, I don't know, you just were at the store and your house is dirty and somehow magically buying cool cleaners is going to clean it for you. But then you get home and you realize, ooh, I have to use the cleaner. Nah, I'm good. But you have cleaners that you like that you stick with on a regular basis. But those fancy cleaners you bought are now just taking up space and you're never using them, but they were super expensive. So you don't want to let go of them because what if you use them one day, but the truth is you won't use them and they're just taking up space. I know it feels wrong to get rid of cleaners, but this is something that we have to declutter. And I can just, I'm telling you all the homes I've ever decluttered, they have way too many cleaners. And this is ironic. The dirtiest houses always had the most cleaners. And I think a big cleaners don't expire, but here's the issue with all your excess cleaners. You're not using them. And I, I truly believe that the dirtiest houses have the most cleaners because when they go to clean, they're overwhelmed with options. So they're like, it's so many cleaners that they're like having decision fatigue on what to pick. And they, what there's just, oh my gosh, so many options. And they just don't want to clean because there's too many cleaners. And so just the excess can go. And maybe if you're like, really, you're like, okay, you've taken all the ones that you know you never use, use them up today somehow. Dump them down the toilet, do a toilet scrubbing thing. I don't, I don't know, but they got to go because they're taking away from the cleaners you do love. They're making your life harder. They're taking up valuable space and they're overwhelming you every time you actually go to clean the house. So they're like a negative thing. They're absolutely leaving. I also always find expired medication. Always, always, always. And this can be potentially dangerous, but the big thing is they're not as effective. So you have pain relievers, allergy medications, cough syrup is a big one that it, especially children's medication, children's Tylenol, children's um, like Advil, children's cough or whatever it is. It's if it's like two, three years expired or more, it's really lost as of its effectiveness and they got to go. And again, they're also taking away space from the medication that you do have. So it's hard to find what you need quickly. You're tired. Everybody's barfing. You stumble in to try to find something and you're rooting through a bunch of medications. You have so much and 90% of them are expired. So taking the time to go through and eliminate those excesses, it just makes life easier. It means when you go back in and you need something, you can see everything. Ah, you have breathing room, nothing's jumbled, a big hot mess sandwich, life is easier. And the only thing you've done is get rid of the things that are trash anyways. So it's sleeping. Okay. Boots and coats. And I wanted to talk about boots and coats right now because boots and coats is the time to donate those is now. It's starting to get cold if if you are like me and you live, I live in Canada, it's starting to get cold. So not only homeless shelters is a perfect place to donate old coats, but um, I, I see your comment. I'll be right there. Um, but donating even to Goodwill, a lot of parents shop at Goodwill for their kids' boots and coats this time of year. It's so expensive. And if you have coats that your children have outgrown and boots that your children have outgrown in your closet, that isn't kind. They're not going to wear them. They're way too small. Do somebody a favor and donate them today. People are looking to buy them as it's getting cold outside. Please, please, please pass those on and give yourself the gift of more space, more space. Listen, you don't have to do this. This is very nice. Jovi's mom, thank you so much. Can you give me a final procrastination push of encouragement? Having a yard sale tomorrow, have gotten rid of 30% of your house decluttered and you're tired already. Yes, I can. Here's the push. You are doing a yard sale. You've already done so much work. Push yourself. Can you push 10% more? Because there is bedding. There is old picture frames. There is baby items. There is clothes your kids have outgrown. There are DVDs and VHS, whatever. I know. I know you have more things in your home that tomorrow when the yard sale's done, you're going to say, man, I wish I put that in the yard sale too. Don't live with that regret. 
take another look right now. Go through your house just with the intent of finding things that can also go in the yard. You can do this. You, you can do this. It's not just about the money. It's about like not having the regret of missing this opportunity. When it's going to be one of these things. Um, there's going to be things. We're going to talk about this right now. Novelty mugs. Novelty mugs. Oh, wait a minute. This is a good question. Let's get back to this. Um, can Miss Melissa, can I donate a coat that has a hole in the inside pocket? Absolutely. Absolutely. If somebody loves the coat, they're going to take the time to mend it. But honestly, they'll wear it even without that. Absolutely. Donate it. Don't you dare fix something before you donate or keep it because you're like, ooh, I want to possibly fix it first. Just let it go and donate it. Okay. Novelty mugs. Here is the thing. Keep your novelty mugs that you love. I, I think novelty mugs are awesome. I'm always buying new ones. It's always one of those things about the store. I'm like, I just got a Sanderson Sisters one when I was at the Halloween store. And I'm like, la, 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 I love this. Except I also have like a bazillion other novelty mugs that I, because these are like things you get all the time, whether it's a gift or you just treat yourself to, but we don't get rid of the old ones. Like this is the problem. We're going to be 80 years old and have 10 cupboards filled with novelty mugs if we don't let go of the old. So you got some cool new ones. Those are the ones you're using. I should have brought down. I have this mug. It's so cool. It says rise and shine mother cluckers. <laughs> and it has a chicken on it. And I bought it because I love the saying, but it's so small. It doesn't even hold a cup of like my cappuccino that I drink because I like a lot of frothed milk. So I'm just looking at it and I'm like, ha ha ha, it says mother cluckers, but it's completely useless. I should just let that go. I am going, I'm going to let that go because I also just got this new Sanderson sisters mug. That's real big. That'll hold a gallon of coffee. Not that I drink coffee, but you know what I'm saying? So the old ones go. Because we have to be realistic about the amount of room that we have and the amount of things like novelty mugs that are worth taking up the space in our kitchen, which is the most valuable real estate in our home. And we we can keep novelty mugs, but we can't keep all the novelty mugs. 22 coffee mugs or so. That might be too many. But I mean, if it fits, if it fits... And it's and you have room for everything, and there's not a bunch of stuff all over your counter because you don't have room to put some of these things away. Cool, you do you, boo. But if you feel like you don't have enough space in your kitchen for all your things, and you have 22 mugs, then that's that's where the issue is coming in. Food storage containers. I have never decluttered a home that didn't have too many food storage containers, and that didn't have more tops than bottoms or more bottoms than tops. So like the tops and the and the bottoms didn't all match. Seriously. And this is probably the hardest thing to keep organized in a kitchen because there's excess and like 20% of them don't even have matching lids or bottoms. So just clearing out those, if nothing else, like pairing them all together, taking a minute, putting on some songs, taking a bottom, putting the lid on, and doing and anything that's left that is a bottom that doesn't have a lid or vice versa is like goodbyes, goodbyesos. They're absolutely leaving. 13 serving platters. I'm coming for your serving platters. I'm not talking about all your serving platters. If you want to keep one for turkey or you want to do like a, you know, a Ch chair, ch a cooter board, a cooter, a ch a cootery board. Um, totally got that. But I am telling you, I have decluttered so many kitchens, and they're like, why, friends? Why so many serving platters? Or, or, and I'm talking about cake play, all the fancy things that you would serve your food on that nobody ever uses we don't use them. We might use one for turkey for Thanksgiving dinner. Can we be real now? You aren't using them. 
they're taking up space. And I know they're in the very high cabinet or in their very low cabinet. And you're thinking, so what does it matter? Every inch of space matters. It matters because it be, can be used for something good. You have at least 20 platters. I know you're not alone, Elstar. This is a problem. I, I, I added this because when I'm decluttering people's kitchens, I always find ridiculous amounts of platters. And here's the most hilarious part. They're all thick with dust because nobody's using a platter. Nobody's using, they are always forgetting they even own platters, yet they have so many platters. Just five or six Halloween platters, but you use them. Okay. Listen, if you're being realistic and you use those platters, keep the platters. I'm talking about the ones that you are like, this is beautiful. Rachel has one cabinet for entertaining. If it doesn't fit in there, it goes. Yep. Love it. You're like putting a limit container concept. This is very smart. You're doing so good. Okay. Um, you still have your grandmother's platters. If you're using them, awesome. If they're just taking up space, they're going to go. This one, I'm coming for all of you. I, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way you're making fondue. Are you? Is there anyone on this planet that actually makes fondue on a regular basis? I've tried it, you know, melted chocolate. I've done the melty cheese. It's a huge pain in the butt. I've never done it again. I bought a fondue set. I realized real quick that sucks. Um, <laughs> you can't take my fondue set. <laughs> Do you use it? I'm, Jasmine, listen. Like real talk. When is the last time you've used this fondue? Honestly. Oh my gosh. I'm alone in this. Okay. I'm shocked. Your family does it at least once a month. Color me shocked. I, I am, I am, you, you might be the only person, um, that I've ever heard that actually does this on a regular basis, I bow down to you because I am just not that person. And most people are not yet. We all, for some reason, have a fondue set. <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay. They got to go. You're Swiss. Is that why? <clears throat> okay. Appliances that you never use. And I don't mean big appliances. Obviously, I mean like kitchen appliances. I've decluttered so many kitchens where they have food processors because we're supposed to, every home's supposed to have one, yet nobody ever uses it. Now, if you use it, good. But if you don't, you don't need it. Ice cream makers, rice cookers, if you're not using it, bread makers. Oh, bread makers. There was a hot second where I thought I'd be a homesteader <laughs> and I was really into bread baking. That was ridiculous. I almost bought a bread maker. Turns out, I hate making homemade bread, and the taste of sourdough tastes like vomit to me. It's disgusting. If you love it, cool, 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 but it's not for me. So why was I a juicer? <clears throat> yeah, the, the waffle maker. The waffle maker. So funny. Yeah, and you're right. All you need is a Dutch oven to make bread, you know, so it, 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 they they can go now. Oh my, is this a pancake cooker? Never in my life. Where is this? I've lost the comment for a second. Where's the pancake cooker? Is that a thing? A pancake cooker. Is that like a waffle maker? Anyways, if you use it, keep it. If you use it, keep it. I used to use my Instapot all the time. Then I got an air fryer and my Instapot has never been used since. It's so big. It takes up so much space. It's got to go. And when I got the Instapot, I never used the Crock-Pot again. So why was I keeping the Crock-Pot? This is all, it's all bonkadonks. It's all just so much space. Sandwich maker. Is that a thing like the George Foreman grill maybe? Anyways, the point is we have appliances. I know you do. You have appliances that they're not you're not using, and it's gonna free up so much pizza maker, quesadilla maker. I love it. Two toasters, Diana. Never know when one breaks. <laughs> you're donating a toaster today. You're donating a toaster today because 
all these little dumb things add up to like multiple cabinets in your kitchen that are being used. You know, that's all. Just, yep, Garden Girl got rid of her walk. Wedding gift 28 years ago, didn't even use it. Exactly. Like if you're using it, you guys, absolutely keep it. I'm not shaming you. That's the whole thing. If you're using these, keep it. If you're never using it, you're not going to be a different person tomorrow. We're not. It's just taking up space. And every time you look at it, you're like, oh man, I should probably have been making pancakes with that pancake maker. It just makes us feel bad about ourselves, and it takes away our space. So goodbye. <clears throat> now, vases or vases, if you're fancy, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Is it vase? Is it vase? Is it both? You have too many. Never decluttered a person's house where I didn't find like at least six vases under their kitchen sink. How often do you get fresh flowers? Never. If you do, it's like one bouquet at a time, maybe two. But every time someone delivers us flowers and it comes with the vase or the vase, whatever, we keep it. No one knows why. And then we put it someplace. And it's like over 20. If it's a collection and you're displaying it and you love it, I'm not coming for your collection. If they're stuck under your kitchen sink or somewhere, you just shove them because somebody sent you a beautiful bouquet of flowers and then when the flowers croaked, you kept the vase. I am coming for you. I'm coming for you because no. They're taking up way too much space. Judy donated them all to our local flower shop. That's a good place. Yes, they always carry. They're always under the sink. Carrie, I lost you. They got to go. They, 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 yep. They're taking up space under your sink. We're not going to, we're not going to regret letting those go. We, we don't, we don't need more than two. Unless like you're constantly picking flowers from your beautiful garden and you have tons of beautiful flowers and you always have like six bouquets on the go. Totally, totally keep that many, but let's get real. Most of us it's just wasted space. Okay. Old bills. This one, again, never decluttered a home where I didn't find bills that were years old. I'm not talking about bills that haven't been paid, like bills and statements, credit card statements, like things that you've already paid, but then for some reason just didn't throw out the paper. And fast forward five years and you still haven't thrown out the paper and then you've all the other papers and then it's just like papers it's like if something comes in the mail with our name on it, we feel like, well, I guess this stays in our house forever now. And it's crazy pants. And it sucks because we do have to consistently always be decluttering this stuff like this junk mail and these old bills. But I'm here to tell you, I'm giving you permission. If you didn't use it as a tax write-off because you run a business out of your home. So if you don't run a business out of your home, currently. Not like, well, what if someday I want to start a business? No, no, it doesn't work like that. If you didn't run a business out of your home, when you pay the bill, you don't need to keep them. They're all gone. Shred, shred them, shred them all. Get rid of all of them. They've all got to go. All those electricity bills from three years ago, gone. There's zero reason to keep them. No, it's just trash. You're just keeping garbage now. You don't need to keep them. They can all go. How long do we keep our taxes? That is seven years. So if you've, you, when you file your taxes, you get like a package, you know, all the things that you file in your tax return. Seven years, you want to keep those. You don't need to keep anything over seven years. So all those papers can just go. They can just buy. Um, and get them online. So I, I would keep your paper that you file your taxes for. If it's like receipts and things like that, you can probably find a lot of that online, but it just makes your life easier if you ever get audited because they won't just take a credit card statement as proof. They want like the actual, like whatever paper it was that you use as a deductible on your taxes. So just if you're running a business out of your home and you're claiming things on your taxes, then you want to keep it for seven years. 
the rest of it can go. Bye. It's the same for Canada and the U.S. It's seven years. For taxes, all the other stuff, go. You would feel weird treading tax. Do I don't, do it. You don't need to keep those. Burn them. Yeah. You've been burned too many times. You keep receipts forever. No. But but listen, if you if it's a receipt that you haven't used for tax purposes in the past seven years, there is zero reason to keep it. You don't need to keep it. Also, why does everybody keep their, this isn't even on here, but your um, your food receipts, like you go to the grocery store and then you keep the receipt. What do you guys do with that receipt? I'm asking like out of general curiosity because I don't return, I've never like returned food to the grocery store. So, but I see a lot of people like, a lot of people I've decluttered for in the past, like they have like drawers filled with grocery receipts or their gas receipts or like the receipts from Costco, but way pa- like for like a law, lo- I don't know why I'm, I'm genuinely asking what they're keeping them for. So when I'm at the grocery store and they say, do you want your receipt? I always say no, unless it's something that I might have to return like clothing or if I purchase something that might break. But at the grocery store, when I buy food, I always say, no, thank you because it just goes in my purse. And then I just have like a garbage pail purse. Okay. This is, I put in here because I really struggle with this one. So, so, so bad. Um, Burnt out candles. So I'll burn, I love burning candles. And then when it gets to the bottom or there's like a little bit left and I'm like, Ooh, it's starting to smell like burning because it's too low. I just keep it for some reason. Or I buy a candle and I don't like the smell of that candle. Now you're just going to go in a cabinet forever. (laughs) Like, No. And I don't, I'm not going to like keep the jar and recycle them because I'm very lazy and I don't do that. But I just like, it feels weird to throw out a candle, but I need to just throw out the candles. And I could like remove the wax and recycle the jar like a good human. But I think that's part of the reason that I keep keeping them is because I'm not a good human and I'm very lazy and I'll never make time for that. So, and I know fire stars, this is what my husband's like, where did that go? Ha ha ha, I just keep it. No. <laughs> there was a fire starter comment. It's, they're going so quickly. Used candles for fire starters. So my husband's like, save all the lint, the dryer lint, and then use wax and make like fire starters. So, but like we never made these fire starters. And then I just had bags of used dryer lint. And he was making me keep all the um the egg cartons and all my old wax from candles. And like now we just have all this clutter with the promise of someday I'm going to make this thing that I'll never make. And I, it's like, I got to get real with myself. I only have so much capacity to do, like, I'm, I'm just trying to keep up with like dishes and laundry and tidying and working and having three kids and making dinner. And I'm just trying to, and like maybe doing a couple fun things, you know, like I don't have the capacity for projects that aren't even cool just because I feel like I should do these things. So I'm like good or whatever. Like I just can't. So they're gone. I just throw it all out and then I don't feel bad about it ever again bathing suits, you guys, 20 bathing suits. And here's why, because we are all so guilty of this. The only way we really buy bathing suits is if we're going on a trip or it's the summer and we're like, oh, I need a new bathing suit, but we never get rid of old bathing suits. Even if they don't fit us, even if they look terrible on us, they live in our bathing suit drawer or our bathing suit basket or wherever we keep bathing suits forever. And the elastic's all nasty and they're horrible. And it's like your it's tits McGee with your boobs hanging out or whatever. They're horrible. You'd never be caught ever dead in them, but we keep them forever. So um, no, only two suits. Is it just me? I have so many bathing suits. This might be a me problem. This might be because I need to declutter. I definitely need to declutter my bathing suits. I also need to declutter puzzles and board games. 
I really struggle with these. I think a lot of it, a lot of you guys don't have bathing suits. It's just me. It's just me. That's fine. <laughs> Puzzles and board games is identity clutter for me, hands down, because I love board games. And so I have too many. And I have a lot, like when my kids were younger, I would get board games that were age appropriate for them, but they've way outgrown them. But it was very hard to let go of the board game. So I better. When we moved, I was like, no, I had an entire cabinet dedicated to board games. I got rid of over half and then I had a ton of puzzles. So I like doing puzzles but I'm never going to redo a puzzle I've already done. So why the heck do I put all the pieces back in the box and then put it in with the board games? That puzzle should be gifted to someone else, right? Like we need to pass these board games and, and puzzles on. There, I said it. If you got old board games and puzzles you're never using, please pass them on. This one is bonkers, badonk donks. I would say... The majority of homes that I've decluttered still had baby items and not, oh, puzzles too. Okay, that was good. Puzzles too, like nursing homes, senior homes. That's a good comment. Mm, it's a beautiful place. I used to work at nursing homes and yeah, you're right. Oh, please, please take those. Please take your puzzles to a nursing home. That's so beautiful. Okay, sorry. Back to baby items. Baby items, um, why? And I'm not talking about the really special baby items. Yeah, that's a good, another good comment. Oh, I'm getting distracted because you guys are giving such good stuff. If games or puzzles are missing pieces, just put it in the trash. Don't donate those. That's really mean. <laughs> Someone works forever on a puzzle. There's like two. Nah, that's just that's just me. Just throw it out. Just throw it out. Okay, baby items. So, um, again, like over half of the homes that I've decluttered have had basements or attics filled with play pens and strollers and high chairs and jumpers and baby clothes, like bins and bins and bins of baby clothes. And their youngest kid is like seven, or older and they have no intentions of having more babies. And it's just because they haven't passed them on. Like they haven't, they haven't been like, oh yeah, no, I'm totally using none of that baby stuff. They just haven't been intentional about letting it go. And in the meantime, there are people missing out on all those baby items. So if you know you're not having more children, please donate your baby items. I'm not talking about the special things that you want to keep in your memory bins that were your children. So there'll be a few things, maybe the first outfit they wore home from the hospital. I keep like the first Halloween costumes because I'm a weird Halloween lover. There's a couple like really special things, but there's still people with like baby. There's like people who are going to be grandmas soon who still have baby items. I know you didn't just, I know you just didn't keep your baby items for the point that you're going to be a grandma someday. You just did it because you didn't get rid of it because your kids are going to want new baby items. They're not going to want a playpen from 1947. So my point is you gave them all away. You guys are so good. You guys are good with the baby items. Yes. Okay. I threw in Halloween costumes because this is something we generally tend to hold on to even though we don't use them again. But now is the time to donate them because Halloween is coming up fast. And it's like, this is tough times this year. Everything is so expensive. And there are people, especially if you have children's Halloween costumes that your kids have outgrown, please, please, please donate them. Put them free on Facebook Marketplace for those parents who are really struggling right now and can't afford costumes. You are really doing a service or donate them to Goodwill. Please give your old costumes away that your children have outgrown because now is the time. Such a kind thing to do. Such a kind thing to do with Halloween coming up quickly. Kids love dressing up and it's expensive. And if you could give them away for free, you could really make a little kid so happy. So you could bring them so much joy if you have old Halloween costumes that your children have outgrown. Please gift them 
now, like today, to people who can't afford them this year. Same for Christmas decorations. Right now, everybody's shopping for Christmas decorations, or they will be soon. And they're if they can't afford it, they're just starting out. Everything's so pricey right now. They're shopping at Goodwill. They're shopping at Value Village. They're shopping at these secondhand things. If you have old trees, old decorations, every year you're like putting up and you're like, I never take those out of the box. Why not donate them now instead of after the holidays? Why not gift them now to someone who can actually use them and love them and enjoy them? Now is the time to do it. And it's going to make decorating your home easier because you have less stuff, right? You have less stuff. Christmas hoarder. I'm also a Christmas hoarder, Cheryl. But this year I have told myself I'm going to go through my bins before I am ready to decorate and kind of like have a plan and edit things that I'm not going to put up and just donate them so that other people can enjoy them. And I can feel good about that. I can feel really, really good about that. And so the last thing, you ready for this one? This is, this is, this is the big one. It's a little, whatever. A negative self-talk specifically about your ability to declutter. Every single person who has ever hired me as a clutter coach, as a decluttering coach, or to come to their home to organize has hired me because they tell me they are bad at decluttering or they're bad at organizing. They're like, I, I'm, I can't. I can't get rid of everything, anything. I, I'm so bad at this. I'm bad at managing my home. I suck at being organized. I'm just a messy person. And this negative self-talk becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Nobody wants to even attempt anything that they're bad at. Nobody wants to fail. And if you're telling yourself you're going to fail before you even start, you're never going to try. So you are not allowed to tell yourself that you are bad at decluttering. You are not bad at decluttering. You just haven't had practice. You are not bad at organizing. You just haven't found the right system for you. You just haven't made time yet. You are not bad at keeping a clean house. You just haven't figured out a rhythm and a system that works for you. You are not bad at managing your home. And if you're telling yourself that, you're not allowed to. You're decluttering those nasty self-talk, horrible words and phrases from your life. And instead, you're going to replace them with, I am good at decluttering. I get better every day at letting go. I am capable of keeping a clean house. And I don't care if you believe it or not. Those are the words that I really want you to tell yourself because they will become true. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? We got a few minutes. You guys want to ask any questions at the end? Um, you feel like you're finally at a place where you have what you truly need. You feel like your counters are covered in things you use. You struggle to put things away, even though it has a home. Any advice? Yes. You are a visual organizer, Ellie. So you have a home for things, but it's probably a hidden home. And you naturally want to see your things. And maybe you're telling yourself, I want clear counters. But the truth is, your brain is saying, I feel anxious when I can't see this stuff I use every day. So I'm going to suggest that you look for more visual op options. So right above where you naturally pile, can you have a shelf or buckets or hang a little baskets right on the wall? How can you create a home that's within two feet of where you're naturally putting things down? So that's phase one. Phase two is just because you have a home doesn't mean you're in the habit of using it. So when I first started organizing, I was in the habit of being messy. And so we have to train ourselves to be tidier. And I did this with alarms. So I would set alarms to go off to do like these five minute tidy ups throughout the day where I'm like, I left my brush, and my deodorant, and my toothbrush, and everything's being left out. But then every day I'd be in the habit of picking it up opening the drawer or opening the basket or whatever, or putting it away, putting it away, putting it away. And now I'm creating a put away habit. 
eventually you won't need the alarms anymore. You're done with something. You're so in the habit of putting it there that you'll do it without the alarm. So it's like a twofold thing. You know what I'm saying, friends? It's the, it's the, you're not having a system that's made for you, but also you're not in the habit of using your new system. Rachel, any advice for someone who moved during the pandemic when you were homeschooling and never really gave anything a home? You have four kids, three with ADHD and a husband with ADHD. Yeah, you just start one thing at a time. I have a macro organizing guide on my website called, you go to clutterbug.com and you just look under the printables and it's called a macro organizing guide and it breaks things down like light bulbs, batteries, extra cleaning products underwear. It literally has everything. You just pick one thing off of there and like, okay, today, where do my batteries live? There's here, they're here, they're everywhere, they're everywhere. Where's the new home for all the batteries? Gather them. That's the battery home. Okay. Cross that off. Where do light bulbs live? I don't know. There's this is where light bulbs live. Where do extra tools live? Where do your homeschooling supplies live? Like slowly and methodically, not in one day, just keep checking off the list. And this list can really help you get started because it's already broken down into lots of macro categories. So you just pick one category a day. Easy peasy. Oh, look at you. Thank you. You, I lost you again. Um, it says you well, have been watching me for 10 years, but you've never caught a live. But then it, it's it gone. And I'm going to be here. It is Amanda. Hi. It does almost feel like a two-way conversation. Thank you. Uh, I feel the same way. You know what I've recently discovered? It's very sad. Um, I need to start holding things farther away to see it. And I'm feeling like reading the comments is getting harder. <laughs> Say it ain't so, friends. I need glasses. I am in denial of my age. I am be, I'll be 44 this year. <laughs> I don't want glasses. Okay. Uh, Babs Davis, what happened with the flooded backyard? Did I fix it? And the laundry chute was cleaned. Yeah. So I cleaned the laundry chute, I put a bucket down at the bottom, and I dumped bleachy, soapy water, and then I used my big duster to get the sides. It's spick and span, friends. The backyard, it has never flooded since. I think it was just like weird, crazy pants thing. Once in 100 years, way too much water. The whole backyard flooded, and it came right to the house. It'll probably do this in the spring when the snow melts, but it has never flooded since. I've also negotiated with the house. I am not a woo-woo person. I do not believe in you magical woo-woo stuff. Yet I'm outside talking to the house. Hello, Betsy. I know you must be angry that we moved into you, and that's why you're making my life a nightmare. Everything was breaking. It flooded, it flooded, it flooded. Tornado ripped the roof off. Everything broke. It was like, this was breaking, this was breaking, this. I was like, listen, house, you are cursed. Is there some sort of Indian burial ground, sun, a thing going on? So we had a chat. I promised her bird feeders, and every time, this is so weird, you want to get a glimpse of my weirdness? Hold on to your hats, friends. Every time I see that it's going to rain, I buy her another bird feeder. I am a weirdo. And it hasn't flooded since. I'm going to knock on something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> desperate time. I was desperate, friends. I was negotiating with the house and I was talking to my house outside. I, I did some weird things because um, it was it was, it was was dark times when we first bought this house. But everything is going beautifully perfect now. So no more flooding, no more puking, no more things breaking, no more nightmares. It's all good. Uh, Amber, you don't want to be the only one in your home that knows where things go. Your husband doesn't like labels all over the place. You're a ladybug with grass, with cricket tendencies. You have two kids, three and five. I understand that he doesn't like labels all over the place, but what if it's like a really beautiful label? 
And you only need the labels until he's in the habit of knowing and your children are in the habit of knowing where everything goes. Labels are magical. Labels are going to help you. Labels are also a subconscious reminder to put things away. So if your husband and kids are like naturally leaving things out, the label can help them and yourself to put things away. It doesn't have to look like a kindergarten classroom um, to, to like... You can have beautiful labels that look sophisticated, 100% will change your life. And then eventually you won't need them anymore, but bird feeders and glasses are on the list. Yeah, I need I need these reader glasses. I know myself. I am going to put them down. I'm going to have to have 50 pairs. I'm going to have to pair my purse and in my car and here because when you put my friend, my friend was like, hey, try these on. And I put them on. It was his glasses. He's like, you probably need glasses. Because I, I was like, I can't read my phone. It's all blurry. And he was like, you probably need glasses, you old fart. And he took his re readers off and he gave them to me. And I, I was like, everything's so blurry. I'm like, you're blind. And then he said, no, look at something close. And I looked and it was crystal clear. <laughs> But that's the thing. So you can't just wear them 24-7. You only wear them when you're reading something? What is this kind of nightmare? Or do you get bifocals? And if you're only using them when you read something, do you then need them every place you could ever possibly read something? Am I hanging them around my neck now? Is this what's become of me? I'm I'm not okay. Everybody check in with your mid-40 friends, okay? They are not okay. They are not okay. I'll get over it. But I'm not okay. All right, you guys. I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be a bird for the party. Yeah, I have like 15. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay. Um, love you guys so much. Um, Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope I've inspired you to let something go today. One thing on this list. If you could let one of these things go on the list today, you are winning at life. Okay. Um, I'm going to see you guys next time.